So welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm talking about Ricardo Tishi's latest Burberry collection. But before I continue you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Fashion Roadman for all your fashion news. <laughs> So Burberry, a brand that was created in 1856 by Thomas Burberry, was a brand that was built on the ethos of the idea that the clothing should protect you from the harsh weather conditions of Britain. So essentially Burberry is a brand that was formed on the basis of utilitarianism and function. Or in other words, Burberry was techwear before techwear. Thomas Burberry also invented the gabardine fabric, which was a breathable, weatherproof and hard-wearing fabric which revolutionized rainwear at the time because all the waterproof fabrics at the time were really heavy and really uncomfortable to wear. But since then, of course, there have been a lot of fabric developments, whether we're talking about Gore-Tex, Event, Polartec, and many more things. Now, as far as Burberry goes, there's an amazing, amazing book by Brian Kitson um, called Burberry Days. Now, Brian Kitson is someone who joined Burberry in 1958 and it's basically just him writing about what he saw working for Burberry, so how they ran the business. Um, it's mainly talking about the business and logistics of Burberry, which is really interesting because reading this, you actually learn how innovative Burberry was in a business sense and in a marketing sense. And they created so many business and marketing models that are commonplace in luxury fashion. So I'd suggest if you want to learn more about Burberry, definitely pick up this book. In my description, I actually have a list of like books I recommend, um, so you can find it in that link. But something really interesting that I read in this book was the fact that Brian was talking about how, at the time, the main competitors for Burberry were brands like Macintosh or Aquascutum. And then in more recent times, you see that Burberry kind of transitioned into becoming part of this luxury space against brands like Gucci, Dior. And of course, Burberry have runaway shows on the fashion schedule. Now, I don't know how I feel about this till now because I feel like when it comes to the luxury fashion space and having runaway shows and being on that level, I don't think Burberry has a lot to bring to the table as a brand. If you look at brands like Dior or brands like Balenciaga, these are brands that are built on couturier, some of the greatest couturiers of our time. So as a designer, if you become the creative director of Balenciaga, there's so much you can work with because Christian Dior and Christopher Balenciaga, for example, created so many interesting silhouettes that you can then repurpose and recontextualize into a more modern or contemporary context. Now, when it comes to Burberry, all you can really do with Burberry is use the print, use the color beige or do something with a trench coat. That really isn't enough. And I think when it comes to Burberry runway shows, the reason why they've always bored me and no one really cares is because every runway show, we just see loads of trench coats in different colors and different fabrics and it gets boring after a while. I think the trench coat should be something that's a permanent collection. And I think as far as the runway goes and you know, Burberry creating its voice in this luxury fashion space, especially the creative luxury fashion space. I think they need to allow a designer the creative freedom to create their own imprint with Burberry. Just the same way Gucci is a brand that started on the basis of luxury goods. And then they brought in Tom Ford, who then had a very distinct look that became associated with Gucci. And Gucci became associated with the fashion space. Um, now they, they're doing that with Alessandro Michele. Um, there are other brands that have done it, like Phoebe Philo at Celine or Adi Slaman at um, Salon in Paris or Yves Saint Laurent, whichever one you want to call it. And so, of course, their current creative director, Ricardo Tichy, is someone that they brought in, um, someone who was really successful at Givenchy, and they wanted him to kind of bring his sort of mix of streetwear and luxury fashion aesthetic to kind of revitalize Burberry. And... I think his first collections at Burberry I wasn't really a fan of because they seemed a bit boring the same way Burberry collections always are. And I think that was mainly because he didn't really have the creative freedom um, to design the way he wants to. That's just my personal speculation. And just based off of my experience working with luxury brands, I think one thing that people fail to realize when they're reviewing shows or they're talking about um, how designers design or whether a collection's good or bad, they never bring into account how 
the corporate side of fashion can actually limit a designer. Like, as someone who's the CEO of Burberry can literally put limitations on what a designer can make um, because they don't feel like it's going to sell well. And I don't see a lot of people pointing that out. And I think it's something that's really good to point out because when we look at all the luxury fashion houses, some creative directors have way more creative freedom than others. And I think that's really important uh, to point out. And I think with the Fall Winter 21 menswear show that I'm going to talk about today, one of the reasons that I really liked the show was it, it looked way more creative than stuff I usually see from Burberry. And also it, it kind of looks like it's a starting point for Ricardo Tishi being given more creative freedom um, to design in a way that's a lot more creative. And it's something that I'll definitely be looking forward to, not just for this collection, but for future collections. So this collection was titled Escapes and it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, this collection, as he describes, is paying homage to the relationship between humanity and nature. And now, of course, we are living in a time with things like COVID-19 that is making all of us stay indoors. And while a lot of designers we have seen from the past couple of um, shows are looking at, you know, recontextualizing clothing for this new COVID era that we live in, people are making things more cozy, things that can be worn at home, things that are more versatile. And Ricardo Tichy went the complete opposite direction, um, designing collections that are inspired by what we miss and the outdoors and things like that. And I personally find it quite funny that the opening look was a trench coat in the traditional beige. It's just like Burberry just won't let us be with these trench coats. Um, but I thought it was an interesting trench coat with a twist with the fringes on the end. And it really brought across this feeling of the outdoors. Now, I was talking to someone on Instagram called Elfie, who I talk to a lot, and um, she has really good insight on fashion. And we're talking about how the fringes resemble 18th century hunting frocks, which makes a lot of sense because a lot of the inspiration in this collection was hunting and was the outdoors and things like that. Um, so it's not far-fetched to say um, that that could definitely be one of the inspiration points for this collection. To quote something that Ricardo Tichy said directly, he said, with everyone being sick, at one point I thought, this is like war. Talking to my mum and other people who've lived through war, they were having the same emotions. So I thought, what did people do after the wars? I found out that around the world, the young generations moved to the countryside, to forests and beaches, where they could feel free. In spaces with no buildings, they could see reality. In these places, they built their own universes inspired by the animal world. And I think going off this statement, we can clearly see this idea and this starting point of war and the outdoors in the collection. If you look at some of the pleated skirts that resemble um, what masculinity was in the Roman Empire, and that's a time, of course, of a lot of war, and Riccardo Tisi being Italian, um, it makes sense to draw that comparison. Or there were trench coats that had this sort of v-neck design and they very much resembled body armor and body plates that you would see soldiers wear um, in an era when we were just using swords and then talking about what he was saying about creating a world of animals and things like that we saw a lot of animal prints on a lot of garments as well as a lot of um, fake fur on a lot of pieces a funny talking point in this collection was the footwear with a lot of people saying that they look similar to tabby boots which i don't agree with i think he wanted to bring this idea of like shoes that look like deer hooves which would make more sense and it ties into the collection and also yeah i just don't think they look similar to tabbies at all just because something has a split and looks like a hoof doesn't automatically uh, make them tabbies when describing sort of this animal relation and inspiration in this collection ricardo tishi said I would say chic outdoor luxury, but in a pizza pan way, a human relation with the animal world. And a few days ago, I was actually reading an article on this collection where um, the person who wrote it was talking about the accessories in the collection and how important they are, considering the oversized tote bags that kind of remind you about expeditions or the umbrellas um, to, you know, protect you from the rain. And it's sort of also an ode to this outdoorsy vibe and that is trying to be brought across in this collection. Now, something I don't usually talk about is makeup, but for once, I actually thought the makeup was very, very relevant um, to this collection, so it's something that I'll talk about quickly. Now, looking at my notes, um, the makeup artist for this collection is called Isamaya French. I, I'm hoping that's how you pronounce her name. What she said is that she sought to create this celestial makeup look 
that kind of was in line with the outerwear outdoorsy focus of the collection. And that's why if you look at the models' faces, there were these models that had hand-painted stars on their faces and gemstones and things like that. And to quote what she said about this, she said, we started thinking about how stars could look really beautiful, almost dreamlike. So we created these constellations. They hearken back to nature, this vastness of a night sky. And personally, I like the attention to detail in this collection. It wasn't just in the clothing, but this inspiration was also brought into the accessories or even the makeup. One of the biggest talking points online, however, in this collection were, of course, the Varsity jackets with the pocket sleeves. That was quite interesting and very avant-garde for Burberry, I must say. Um, so I am really curious to know how these things will do commercially. Um, it's something I would literally buy for the jokes. However, I just don't have money to be buying stuff that expensive for the jokes. Um, but I did enjoy how creative it is and it's not like super creative but i think in the realm of burberry i think they're kind of allowing ricardo tissue to step outside the box and i hope this continues and i hope going forward he has even more creative freedom because in my opinion i think trench coats are always going to sell i think one of the main reasons why burberry still does well commercially is the name and what the name of burberry means this heritage british luxury i think in a lot of countries, especially China, that I'm very aware is one of the biggest markets for Burberry, it's kind of what the name of Burberry means. So I think people are always going to buy things that say Burberry on it or a trench coat. But I think once people get tired of that, what's next? And I think if Burberry doesn't have more of a, an imprint in the fashion design space, I don't see it lasting really long, especially because they pivoted away from being known as a brand that's about fabric innovation and tech wear and they moved into the luxury space against the likes of Gucci and all those type of brands. So in conclusion, I really like this collection because I thought it was a step up from past Burberry collections I've seen recently. Um, but I wanna know your thoughts. Comment down below your thoughts on the collection, um, anything that you liked about the collection, anything you disliked, um, anything you like about Ricardo Tisci's work. And on that note, uh, you can like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to support this channel financially and everything I do, you can subscribe to the Patreon, um, which costs $3 a month and you get access to exclusive content. But more importantly, you can support my channel. And Patreon is what allows me to, you know, buy books like this and read books like this, which help me um, improve the content. So on that note, I'll be back with another video very soon. Thank you very much for watching.